Ministry of Music today, and Reverend Small and Brother Davis to the ushers, standing around the doors, to the diaconate, uh, elders, my fellow yoke fellows, the clergy, Reverend Dr. Edwards and Reverend Barnes, to all of you who are present today, to my wife and son who are here today, thank God. My daughter is here, Evangelist Jacynthia and Isaiah, to God be praised. Haven't seen them in a while, just good to see them. Pray with me for just a few moments as I endeavor to preach to you from God's word. For it is God's word that saves us. If you return with me to the gospel according to Mark, chapter 16, we will begin with verse 15 and conclude with verse 20. I thank God for this privilege to stand before you. I do not take it lightly or take it for granted. I thank God for touching the heart of our pastor to select me to bring God's word to them. From the New Living Translation, it sounds like this. And then he told them, go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. Anyone who believes and is baptized will be saved, but anyone who refuses to believe will be condemned. These miraculous signs will accompany those who believe. They will cast out demons in my name, and they will speak in new languages. They will be able to handle snakes with safety, and if they drink anything poisonous, it would not hurt them. They will be able to place their hands on the sick, and they will be healed. In verse 19, <clears throat> when the Lord Jesus had finished talking with them, he was taken up into heaven and sat down in the place of honor at God's right hand. And the disciples went everywhere and preached, and the Lord worked through them, confirming what they said by many miraculous things signs. And the disciples, verse 20, went everywhere and preached. And the Lord worked through them confirming <clears throat> what they said by many miraculous signs. Pray with me for just a few moments as I preach to you from the subject, let God work through you. Let God work through you. Let us pray. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine, and let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in thine. For it is in the only name that matters, Jesus the Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. Each of us have a story to tell that can speak to where we've been while we are where we are right now and where we imagined ourselves to be. If we will reflect upon our story, it would reveal a lot about who we are when we take the time to tell it. Just reflect a few moments on where you grew up. I had the awesome privilege of growing up right across the street in Young's Terrace. Attended Young's Park Elementary School gave Mrs. Clawson, my first grade teacher, a fit. I remember one time she decided that the class had been talking, Sister Anderson, a little bit too much. And uh, so the entire class received the punishment. But this time, I wasn't talking. So I felt that I did not deserve punishment. And if you know anything about Young's Park Elementary School, it has a courtyard, so you can actually leave the classroom and go.
go out of the door of the classroom into the courtyard. Well, me and my bold self, first grader now, decided that I was going to leave the classroom at the end of the day because I was not having it. But as I reflect upon the household in which I grew up, I did not have the sense enough to know that the telephone in the school would connect with the telephone in my parents' house. <laughs> and so as I was outrunning the boys that she sent behind me to catch me, because as a teacher she's responsible for my safety, as I was outrunning them and dusting them by leaps and bounds and laughing at them, the household that I grew up in, well, my mother had just gotten off of the phone with Ms. Clawson, and I remember her to this day, and I'm 59. Because I will never forget. By the time I got on St. Paul Street where I live, my mother was standing in the door with her arms folded. And she had a strap in the hand like this. And all she did, as I reflect upon the household in which I grew up, was point upstairs. You know what happened. I got saved. <laughs> All over again. And many of you probably have stories that you can remember in your household how things, you were taught the right thing. And it had to be what your parents said. There were no questions. Some of you can attest to the fact that your mom, mom or dad had the fastest hands in the East when you open your mouth to talk back. Amen. Am I the only one in here? Amen. Some of you can attest to the fact that you tell your story that they just had that look. And you knew what that look meant. That's right. And you straightened up. Amen. Some of you can attest to the fact that sitting in church and your parent may have been sitting down front and you may have been sitting up there and you they heard something and they looked up and you were out of line and all they had to do was okay I guess I'm here so. it wasn't all bad but I just wanted to share that particular story I even would ask you to reflect on what kind of life you imagine for yourself growing up. I imagined that I would play in the NBA. I imagine. <laughs> Sometimes I have flashbacks. <laughs> I imagine that I would be an architect, that I would build my own, design my own house and build my own house. Imagining and thinking about my stories. Think about your story. Think about Your story and my story has gone through various revisions along the way, and the more you and I try to keep the pen of life from creating its own editorials, it became quite apparent that someone else just kept taking the pen and making his own inscriptions. God was working and has always been working to get us to see that he is the one who ultimately writes our script. If you would reflect on those times in your life when things just didn't work out the way you had planned them, God may have been writing your script. If you would reflect on those times in your life when things just didn't seem to be working out and you saw no way out, just before you were about to lose your mind, God picked up the pen and began to write your script. The Bible tells us stories about 12 men who found themselves in the predicament as we are. These 12 men were Jesus' disciples. They had goals, they had aspirations, and yet they were clueless as to what was about to happen when they fully believed in Jesus. There is a correlation, my brothers and sisters, between their stories and our stories. There are lessons that we can learn from them that can greatly impact our story, which is centered around this one thing. God wants to work through you. God wants to work through you. Let me give you a little bit of background about 
preparation was being made to anoint Jesus' body by Jesus' pastor's aid committee. <laughs> and I can call him Jesus' pastor's aid committee because uh, of Luke 8 and 2 where the women ministered to Jesus and they used their resources, pastor's aid committee. And so when Jesus was laid in the tomb, they did not stop working. They prepared on Saturday evening to get some oils and things and to anoint his body. Then early on Sunday morning, they arose and got up to go to the place where he had been buried. Now, what is interesting to note is that the place was a tomb with a large rock or stone at its entrance. Somebody say, let God work. The women were so focused on ministering to the dead body that they neglected to cover one very important detail. Who was going to roll this stone away? When the women arrived at the tomb, they discovered that the details had already been worked out. <laughs> they had their minds so set on this worship moment, somebody said, let God work through you, that they didn't realize that when God knows the intent of your heart and you miss certain details, he will write in to the script. Well, you know what happened? They didn't find the living amongst the dead. Jesus wasn't there, just as he had told them and his disciples. In fact, who they found and what they found would change their lives forever. They found evidence that God was about to work through them by showing them the bigger picture rather than them focusing on a smaller end. These women took off running. Somebody say, let God work through you. They did as they were instructed. The, the person that they found at the tomb wasn't Jesus, but they found an angel, a man, the text says. And he said to them, now go and tell the disciples including Peter, that Jesus is going ahead of you to Galilee, actually to Galilee, to Galilee, to the place where you first met him. What is so fascinating, fascinating about this is that according to biblical scholars, this portion of the text was the end of the story and a brief statement, statement was made and then the book was closed. But let me suggest that it had to be much made much clearer for us today that the message from this must show that God had something else in mind, that God was rewriting the script. Somebody say, let God work through you. A new ending as that the first person to see Jesus after he arose was Mary Magdalene, the woman from whom he had cast out seven demons. She goes on to, to tell the disciples and they didn't believe her story. Jesus then appeared in a different form to two of his followers who were walking from Jerusalem into the country. And in verse 13, it says, they rushed back to tell the others, but they did not believe the story. And this is where we come to the point of correlation between because Jesus had to rebuke them, call them out, and address the issue of them not only not believing, but refusing to believe. The point is, if you're going to be a part of him, and if you're going to use your story to create more stories, then you're going to have to believe. You're going to have to believe in Jesus. Their lives and our lives are stories of good news that people need to hear. Let me say it again. No matter what your plight is at this moment, your life is a story about good news that other people need to hear. Let me say it one more time. No matter what you may be experiencing in your body or in your mind or in your circumstances of existence, your story is a story of good news that others need to hear. How can I say that? You're sitting in here today, and that's good news. Somebody didn't wake up this morning, but you woke up this morning, and that's good news. You're breathing air out of your body, even though you may be laboring to some point of breathing, that is still good news. 
and somebody needs to hear your good news. You made it through yesterday, that's good news. You made it through last night, and that's good news. You made it here to church this morning, my brothers and sisters, and that's good news. Their lives and our lives are stories of good news that people need to hear. No matter what you have been through or what you may be going through, the underlying theme, if you are a believer, is good news. There is a bigger picture. There is something else to be revealed. There is still ink in the pen, and the canvas is, is fresh and crisp for some, something else to be written. And let somebody say it with me, let God work through you. Now the question that I in, intend to answer today is how does God work through us? It's in the text. Verse 15 and 16 says, and then he, Jesus, told them, go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. Anyone who believes and is baptized will be saved, but anyone who refuses to believe will be condemned. The word go here is the operative word, go into all the world and preach the good news. The word go suggests movement forward. Don't stand still, don't linger around, don't procrastinate, don't hesitate, don't second guess yourself, don't act as if you don't know what to do, just go. Then when you go, preach. This has nothing to do with the license but it is your license to proclaim with intentionality. What do you preach? You preach good news. What do you proclaim? You proclaim, preach, proclaim good news. What is the good news? Your story. The story that was once a bad story, but now is a good story based upon you believing in God's story. Then, as you are telling the story, teach them how to believe so that they themselves can become disciples and they themselves can in turn preach, proclaim, tell their story. Somebody say, let God work through me. That is our purpose. And that is the first point. He demonstrates his purpose. That is our purpose and our mission. There will be some who will believe and there will be some who won't believe, but you can't worry about them. Let's just say to yourself, God, work through me. There will be some who will try to, to, to dilute your story. No, that didn't happen like that. No, that's not the way it, it really is. But you say to yourself, God, work through me. And when you say God work through me, you are saying God work your purpose out in me. His purpose for us is to go. And then he demonstrates his presence. It's in verses 17 through 18. These miraculous signs will accompany those who believe. When you believe, there will be signs. When you believe, there will be signs. When you believe, there will be evidence. When you believe, there will be signs following you or accompanying you. They will cast out demons in my name. They will speak in new languages. They will be able to handle snakes with safety. And if they drink anything poisonous, it won't hurt them. They will be able to place their hands on the sick and they will be healed. These miraculous signs will accompany those who believe. One thing you can be assured of is that where God guides, he will provide. When you go, his presence will abide. Miraculous signs will accompany you because you are obedient and you are staying in your lane. You are not taking credit for what you may say out of your mouth. Uh, you're not taking credit for what God is doing, but God's presence is with you. And that's why stuff is happening in your favor because of his presence. And when God's presence is with you, miraculous signs will follow you. You would need to carry the script that is the word of God, as he is rewriting the script and evidence of his presence will manifest itself right in your presence. Let me tell you that you will be faced with opposition, but opposition won't be any competition. Yeah. 
I know that's bad English, but it's, it's good gospel. Opposition won't be competition. You will be faced with snakeology, as Dr. John Kenny calls it, but you will be able to handle whatever false doctrine that tries to raise its ugly head. Somebody say, let God work through me. My father told me the other day of a story about his cousin in North Carolina. Someone called her and said, Katie, there's a snake in front of your house. She said, really? And uh, you know, she's in the country, so you know, they're kind of used to snakes. And so she said, when she, she told, she said, Tony, when talking to my dad, she said, Tony, when I looked out the door, that snake was standing up like a man. She said, something came over me, and I went in the back room and got me a bat. <laughs> and I went out in front of that house, and she said, Tony, you know what I did? I beat that snake all the way down to the ground. When you feel a presence, when you feel invincible, that's what happens when, when God's presence is with you, you feel invincible. And no type of object that will come to divert you from fulfilling your purpose will hurt you. I just thought I'd share that story. When the enemy tries to have you drink the poison of depression and despair, it's extreme grief and self-pity and tries to impede your progress, God's presence won't let it hurt you. You, will have a, you. you have a divine purpose. You have a divine destiny to fulfill. And God wants to work through you. And that's why he will remind you of what David said. God is my refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Then Jesus says, because I am present with you through the Holy Spirit, you will lay hands or place your hands on the sick and they will be healed. By the presence of the Lord and through your belief that he is who he is, other story will be rewritten because of your obedience and your openness to God at work through you. Somebody ought to say, let God work through me. So not only does God demonstrate his purpose and his presence, God demonstrates his power. When the Lord Jesus, verse 19 and 20, had finished talking with them, he was taken up into heaven and set down in the place of honor at God's right hand. And the disciples went everywhere and preached, and the Lord worked through them, confirming what they said by many miraculous signs. When they believed, they experienced his presence and they experienced his power. There is no doubt that when we go and let God work, his power will do the work. Amen. Signs and wonders are the clue to new script writing. God works through worshipers. God works through worshipers who are also evangelists. Amen. Let me say it again. God works through worshipers. God works through those who have a relationship with him. God works through those who have an a intimacy with him. And they realize that I have a divine purpose. I have a divine destiny that I must fulfill. And so as a worshiper, I am qualified to go and evangelize. And so as we look at the text one final time, and then he told them, go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. Somebody say, let God work through me. Anyone who believes and is baptized will be saved. But anyone who refuses to believe will be condemned. Let God work through me. Through miraculous, these miraculous signs will accompany those who believe. They will cast out demons in my name and they will speak in new languages. Let God work through me. They will be able to handle snakes with safety, and if they drink any poisonous, uh, it, it, will, won't, it won't hurt them. Let God work through me. They will be able to place their hands on the sick, and they will be healed. Somebody say, let God work through me. When the Lord Jesus had finished talking with them, he was taken up into heaven and set down in the place of honor at God's right hand. 
and the disciples went everywhere and preached, and the Lord worked through them, confirming what they had said by many signs and wonders. I'm so glad today that he just didn't leave it like that, but he left with us an example of how God works through his people. Jesus came through 40 and two generations and he came into a world that was pretty much like the world that we are in today. Nobody wanted to believe what God was doing, but God was up to something. God had a purpose. God wanted his presence to be experienced and God wanted his power to be evident. And so he worked through Jesus. Jesus, even as a boy, sat in the temple, and he sat and he confounded the wise men in the temple because God was working through him. Jesus grew up, and the Bible said that he had favor with God and with man because God was working through him. The Bible says that as Jesus grew up and, and he became a man, he began to heal sick and he began to raise the dead and he began to cast out demons because God was working through him. He did not take credit of his, on his own, but he always gave glory and honor to God. Even all the way through a kangaroo court. Yes, a kangaroo court, meaning that they held a trial because somebody got upset because God was working through him. He did not go to the same cemetery, I mean the same seminary that the scribes and the Pharisees went to, and, but God was working through him. And so they decided that they were going to trump up charges against him. And when they began to trump up charges against him, the Bible says he opened not his mouth. And as he began to go through his trials and tribulations, God was working through him. They took him from judgment hall to judgment hall, but God was working through him. They led him up Golgotha's hill and they hung him on an old rugged cross. But my brothers and sisters, God was working through him. He died until death died. The sun refused to shine in the middle of the day, but God was working through him. They took his body down off the cross and they laid him in a borrowed tomb. But I'm so glad that God was still working through him. And the Bible reminds us that on the third day, he rose again from the dead because God was working through him. God had a purpose. God wanted his presence to be experienced. And God wanted his power to be evident. And because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. God wants to work through us. God wants us to open up our mouths and tell our story. Tell how he saved you. Tell how he lifted you up from the guttermost to the uttermost. From sinking sand, he lifted me. With outstretched hands, he lifted me. I was sinking deep in sin far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, deeply rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. And from the waters he lifted me, now safe am I. That's why I need to tell my story. And you need to tell your story because God wants to work through you.